Welcome back into the Kramer Show, and as always, we're having some guests on this one. We just listened to Johnny Pickler, but now we're going on to the defensive tackle for the Chicago Wildcats. He also broadcasts as a guy that has two hats that he has in the SFL. There's probably going to be more soon at some point, but Gerald Giudicessi is joining me now. Gerald, how you doing? Doing fine, Kramer. How about yourself? You know what? It is an amazing time to be in the SFL with so many people joining in, and such as yourself. This is your first season. And first season in the SFL so far. Just tell tell me how how's it, how's it going for you being on the Chicago Wildcats this year. I love being a part of the Chicago Wildcats. Uh, I was talking to Shan and said he was going to uh, draft me late in the third round. I was I was excited like I was in the NFL draft. It was really really cool and you get to meet a lot of nice people here in the SFL. Talking to your teammates. It's been it's been amazing. I couldn't ask for anything more to be in the NFL. So when you were first drafted and you were just because of course as always, once you get drafted in the SFL, you are put automatically into the locker room. How hyped, how shock value was it for your fa- not fans but for your teammates to go in there and then you just meet everybody at once? It was really, really cool. It was a good way, it was a good icebreaker, definitely. Because when you first get in, it's like, oh, you know, are people going to like me? How do you know? And all, all that. But it, everybody just took me in with open arms, asked me all sorts of questions, and we became basically like a brotherhood almost. That's awesome. And then and week one went by. Week two came. You get to Queen City. You recorded your first sack. So how what was that going through your mind knowing that, boom, I finally got that first sack out of the way? It was it was intense just to watch watch my player just play and get my first sack. It was absolutely amazing and, and the guy my uh, player did a celebration that I used to do when I bowled. So it was <laughs> it was it was it was funny because I'm like that's me to a T. But it was yeah it was it was pretty cool. That that's awesome. I that's actually kind of cool. So you you bowl? Uh, do you still bowl and whatnot? I unfortunately had to give that up due to a, a shoulder injury, but uh, my last year was 2008, and when I got done, I averaged uh, I was averaging at least 215 in three different leagues. Oh gosh, I think it. If I bowl, it's going to be like maybe 100, maybe a little under 80. I, I'm not a, I'm not the best bowler in the world, but that right there shows you how the SFL couch the field thing works. I, cause, I mean, obviously you came in this past season, and what was the first game that you watched and you know that you're hooked? Uh, believe it or not, it was on my I was on my way to a uh, University of Pittsburgh football game, and we stopped at this one local. Uh, eatery it's called beer barrel pub and they have like 60 different signature burgers but then they have like the cha- the challenge burgers the five pound the seven and a half the ten or whatever mm-hmm. and we ordered lunch and i looked up and i saw i can't i think it might have been a tulsa game i'm not sure on the two teams but it was on 11 sports and i was watching that and i'm like hmm because i'm a gamer at heart as well so i saw this i was like that's pretty cool, and I was on my phone immediately trying to see what the SFL, what the SFL was about. And the more I read about it, the more I mean, it it just hooked me in. It was, it was just, it was cool. It was new, and I just couldn't wait to be a part of it. So now, what is your thoughts so far, Chicago? I, guys just lost. I know you guys have had a, a little bit of a winning streak going on, but you lost to the Gladiators in overtime. What what is your thoughts on the season gone so far? We've had a couple uh, of really tough games. I mean, we're sitting at four and three right now, but if you take away that overtime game, the last game, and the Hail Mary game that we lost in the very first week, uh, which is disheartening because our defense isn't playing really well as of late, but if you take away those two games and those missed opportunities in those games, we could be six and one and right in the hunt in the playoffs. You guys are sitting really good right now. Yeah, the our our abomination of a game was against uh I believe it was Queen City where an, uh Stephen Hacker just went ballistic on I think he had like three hundred and yeah, it sounds like Stephen. plus yards and it was it, we just we couldn't cover no matter what we did we couldn't cover him. And I don't know, that I wouldn't think that it's more of a defensive uh issue. It was more of just like you said, Stephen Hacker being Stephen Hacker. 
Oh, yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, that you wear a couple of different hats in the SFL. You play defensive tackle. You also broadcast games. So now broadcasting games, is this like a, a dream come true for you to broadcast on TV, especially now that it's on TV? Uh, most definitely. Uh, I'm definitely a sports head. And we talk sports all the time when I was bowling or doing whatever. So doing uh, calling a game is like a dream come true for me. It just, I just, I feel like I'm in the game and you're just, you're actually like a broadcaster. I don't want to joke since I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan that, oh, you're the new Tony Romo. And I'm like, oh. My <laughs> but no, I, I enjoy it because I get to look into the game more and see and enjoy the game in a, in a different perspective, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I know, I know exactly what you mean. So, I mean, I, I, I enjoy it. And I've had, uh, Chris Curtis uh, mentoring me, and, and of course Mike Daggs and the commission. Everyone has been so supportive of me doing this. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I am just so pleased and so happy to do it. So it's like it's as almost as if uh, for like the knowing what you mean thing. Kind of explain it a little bit more to where you know it like what's going on in the SFL. You can you understand like oh this player is good, this player is I mean, not the best, but he'll at least get his say targets or he'll get his interceptions or he'll get his tackles. It's a it's a more of appreciation of like kind of like if you know a lot about the NFL, it's like kind of knowing a lot about the SFL. Is that, is that what you're trying to say as well? Yeah, and, and you look at it when you if you're just a player and you say okay you know we're we're up twenty one seventeen we're up you know thirty one ten. When you do, when I do the broadcast and I, and I look at the all the games, I'm looking at different sets, different looks. At okay, that you know, and try to like and like almost coaching it in your head, thinking okay, what would they do here, and then seeing it, and then like oh okay, they're they're gonna throw out the out pattern here, or they might go up the the short cross here, and it it, it just opens up the game that you're not just watching it you're actually almost becoming almost like a scout or a coordinator mm -hmm. and that's what I, I mean and for me that's that just opened up the game completely for me to, to watch and just be a color guy and just analyze everything well, Gerald, I appreciate your time tonight and or whenever people are listening to this to come on and talk to me a little bit it's, it's kind of cool to Get to know that you're, you used to be a bowler. Now you're a defensive tackle for a uh, for a, an E League. Pretty sick that way. Yes, I mean I, I like that. I've been a gamer all my life, and when you see a a chance to join something like this and be a part of it, and then actually become more of a part of it as a broadcaster, it's just a great opportunity. All right, that's Gerald Judicesi, the defensive tackle. He's also a broadcaster. He just joined me on the Kramer Show. We have more coming up after this.